that's good. And on behalf of Salem Pregnancy Care Center, I want to welcome you to this video. I served this year as the 2011 president for the organization, and we want to use this video to kind of give you an insight as to what's going on in the ministry. First thing I want to share with you, however, is why I got involved with Salem Pregnancy Care Center. It all started in 1985. I met what was to become my wife in 1985. One of the first things that she shared with me was the fact that she was adopted. Now, I was the curious sort, so the first thing I wanted to know was, tell me about how you came into this world. So she shared with me her adoption. I found out that year that uh, it was Hope Cottage in Dallas, Texas, that was the home for unwed mothers that counseled her birth mother. It was an amazing story and one that we kind of kept tucked away for many years. I first found out I was adopted when I was about eight or nine years old, just a child. And um, I came home actually from school that day and told my mother that my best friend told me that uh, I should check with my mom because there's a possibility that I could be adopted. She was going to check with her mother too because she thought she might be adopted also. Again, we're just children. But uh, turns out, I really was adopted, but she wasn't. In fact, I think she got into a bit of trouble at, at, um, <clears throat> when she did get home and her mother instructed her that wasn't her business. In my household, it was the oddity if you were not adopted. My brother was the only natural born son of the family. My older sister was adopted, I was adopted, and my youngest brother was adopted. <clears throat> None of us had the same parents. But um, I guess I was always told um, from the very beginning that being adopted um, was not something that was something to be ashamed of, but it was something to be proud of. That um, if I ever wanted to search for my roots, that my adoptive parents would be glad to do that and help me in any way that they could. But I never had a desire to find um, my birth parents. I had such a great relationship with my parents who adopted me and they gave me such a loving Christian home that I didn't find any need to look elsewhere. But it wasn't until my daughter was born, and I was about 24 years old at the time, that I began to wonder and really question um, just where I had come from. When my daughter was born, I was a new mother. And I guess like all new mothers, I could not keep my eyes off that precious little baby girl. She was just beautiful, and every little feature of hers just fascinated me. And when I would look into her eyes and look into her face, I would wonder just who she really looked like, because I didn't have anyone from a biological standpoint on my side of the family to say, oh, you know, she looks just like my mother or my father or... Um, being adopted, I didn't have that. I guess any similarities that I saw in, in Ashton would have just been my own. I have to say that um, I was too mesmerized by my new baby to do much of anything except for take care of her. So my husband Kyle was the one that was um, the instigator in trying to go about finding where I had come from and trying to find out more about my biological past. So he um, took it on as a task and a mission to find out uh, where I had come from. So this was back in the days where the internet was just uh, becoming readily available to everyone. And so he thought he could just search for my records, uh, my birth certificate, um, adoption information records on the internet. <clears throat> well, he began to do that. but wasn't able to come up with anything of significance. So um, we just decided that maybe a way to find out more about my roots was to take a road trip. So we packed our uh, car up, including our baby girl, who at that time was about six months old, and we headed to Texas, um, Dallas specifically, which was where I was adopted from and where I was raised. And we went to Hope Cottage, adoption agency in downtown Dallas and um, began our search there. The trip to Hope Cottage is when things really got exciting. For the first time we were able to talk to someone who had actually had contact with Elizabeth's birth mother. So uh, we went there, we were able to get on the registry and uh, found out a lot of interesting details about the birth mother and the birth father. 
but we still did not really have the necessary information to really find either one of them. You know, the interesting thing about going to Hope Cottage is that's really where the fun began. They were willing to give us what's called a deleted file. Now, the deleted file gave all the information, characteristics about Elizabeth, but it really did not give any names, addresses, etc., of the birth family. Uh, and they actually mailed it to us about two weeks later. But the interesting thing that they did offer us was a glimpse into the file. For the first time, we found out that an actual person, the birth mother, had written a letter requesting her child back if the child had not been adopted. It was that point that things really began to change. Once we saw a copy of the letter that my birth mother had written in 1969, I believe it was, about a year after I was born, we realized that we had a valuable piece of information because what we had in that letter was a glimpse into the heart of this woman. About two years into the process of trying to find my birth mother, we used every means that we could to accomplish the task and it became quite the event. Um, we had to get a lawyer involved. We had to make some um, court decisions. Um, we had to have a lot of um, uh, God things happen along the way to make it come together for us. Um, but it did, all in God's timing, and it took about two years. And we finally received, um, about a day after my 26th birthday, I got a really great gift in the mail. We finally received the full file disclosures from Hope Cottage that were undeleted and had all the information about all parties involved in the adoption. And it was a happy day. You know, I'll never forget that night. It was a Sunday night that we sifted through the uh, file that we had received from Hope Cottage. Uh, now all the deleted names were no longer deleted. So we went straight back to that letter that was written in 1968-69. And all of my hopes were somewhat diminished real quickly because I found out that in 1968-69 when she wrote this letter after Elizabeth was born, she lived in Alberta, Canada. And I'm thinking, I have searched all over Texas. And uh, I, I, I've got this lady that lives in Alberta, Canada. But I didn't give up hope. In fact, I immediately called uh, information and dialed 555-1212 uh, in that area. And her new last name that she had, there were over 600 people who had that last name. Where I gave them the name of uh, the birth mother. And they told me that that was not in their directory. So what I did is I said, well, if you don't mind, just pick a, a name in that group. There was about 600 names the operator told me with that same last name. I'm not going to tell you that they picked her name, but I'll tell you what I will say. They picked a relative of her husband. Within three minutes, I was on the phone with a relative of her husband, and they were kind enough to give me the phone number for Elizabeth's birth mother. So quickly, I hang up. I call Elizabeth and say, you need to come here. I think I have found uh, your birth mother. Of course, while Kyle was on the telephone to my birth mother for the first time, I was in a state of shock. Um, I was not able to get on the telephone that first night. It was just too overwhelming for me. The realization of a two-year journey that had all come to a climax that night, and I just, I was too fearful to get on the phone. I didn't know what to say, and the emotions were too raw. Um, about, probably about a week later, um, they had mailed to us a care package, and in the package were probably somewhere in the neighborhood of 50 or 60 pictures from their family albums. Some were of my birth mother when she was a child, um, some were of her uh, early years in marriage and starting a family of her own in Canada. And. I remember getting those pictures along with some very beautiful letters um, and realizing that these were people that were just 
so very important and someone that I really wanted to meet. And so after we received those pictures and read letters that were written from the heart, um, I was able to talk to my birth mother for the first time on the telephone. And we developed a relationship from that point on. Later going to visit them in Canada and introducing her to her very first grandchildren, which were our children, and um, just making a, making a connection. And so for the past 16 years, we have developed that relationship. It's been very important. Some people always ask me when I tell this story, uh, it has such a happy ending and there were so many things that happened along the way that were God's hand and all of and all of the search to find her, the reunion, our times together. And it certainly was a God thing, there's no doubt about it. He had his hand in it and he put it all together and we were simply um, participants in his overall plan. But People always ask me, what did your adopted family think about all this? And like I mentioned earlier, my, my parents told me at a young age that I was adopted and it was not anything to, to worry about and everything was fine, that they loved me very much and that, that I was chosen to be a member of their family and that if I ever wanted to search, it would be okay with them. So I knew that, the, that they would not have a problem with what I had done, but I had not told anyone of finding my birth mother until of course we left uh, for our first visit to Canada. And I struggled with how I was gonna break this news to my parents because even though they gave me the okay to do it, I never saw myself actually doing it. So I had a somewhat of a sense of um, guilt a little bit, but I prayed about it and, and the Lord, he gave me a, a notion of what I might do and a plan to, to break the news to them. So, in that deleted file of legal information pertaining to my ad adoption, there was um, there was a legal document that was pages upon pages, and it was actually a, the adoption decree issued by the court system in the state of Texas. And um, at the very bottom of this document, it had my adopted families, my mother and father, and had their signatures. And basically what that document did was it gave them the, the right to adopt me as their child and to legally become my parents with all the responsibilities that go along with that. And I remember reading that document and it was very lengthy and very involved about all the responsibilities of being a, a parent and just what all was involved in that. And having become a parent myself not too long in, that, in the past, I could fully understand for the first time just really what that meant, that responsibility meant. And so I gave um, a copy of that, let me back up. I invited my parents to my home that night, Kyle and I did, and I had made a copy of that original letter that Beverly had uh, written in 1969 asking to have me back if I hadn't been adopted because that was such a beautifully written letter and it showed uh, the heart of a genuinely good person. So I made copies of that letter and I just asked my parents to sit on the couch and I handed them a co each a copy of that letter and didn't say anything else and just said, please read this. Well, of course, it didn't take them too many minutes to realize what it was that they were reading. And it was very emotional. In fact, I've never seen my father cry the way he did that day. The only thing my mother could say was, she said, you found her. You found her, didn't you? And I said, yes, I did. To make a long story, uh, to make a 16 year story concise and short here, um, my parents actually were very eager to meet my birth mother and they welcomed her with open arms into our family and her family too because that's just the kind of people they are so having gone full circle enter, entering the world um, as an orphan um, living in a foster home for a few months before I was adopted 
being adopted into a family and becoming a daughter and then going back and finding my birth parents that's been quite a journey <laughs> um, it's been the highest of highs in my life and the lowest of lows but I will say that I never had to walk that journey alone that God was always right there with me and it turned out to be a really beautiful thing I think that that's why Salem Pregnancy Center is so important to Kyle and I because we have a unique perspective on the sanctity of life um, it wasn't mentioned earlier but when my birth mother discovered she was pregnant with me she was actually visiting um, some some friends of her family in Canada it was the summer of 1967 she was almost 16 years old and the pregnancy developed during that summer to the point that when she came back to Texas and school was starting and she told her mother that she was pregnant her mother was obviously upset about it because of Beverly's age and the fact that she wasn't married and took Beverly to an abortion clinic but the doctor did not believe it was in Beverly's best interest to proceed with an abortion because the pregnancy had proceeded uh, to a point that it would be hazardous to her health at her age to try to do that procedure so by the grace of God I'm sitting here today to tell you the story that we are sharing with you so we believe in the sanctity of life Beverly did not want to have an abortion uh, it was she was very much against that but her mother was in, in charge at that time and she was a minor having said all that she made a really tough choice and she decided to put me up for adoption It was the best decision at the time for her and it was what God wanted and so she did that um, but we just we just are able to speak about all of these topics life abortion adoption re reunions of families because we've been we've been down that path we've seen it from all the different angles the good and the bad and so that's why it's important for me to go to um, Salem Pregnancy and to counsel young ladies who find themselves in the same position that my birth mother found herself in. It's important to me to be able to reach out to them and, and love and, and, and counsel them on, on their options. To counsel them on the sanctity of life and the beauty that is adoption. So many people are fearful of adoption and Unfortunately, very, very few actually choose to go down that path. But that's what I feel God has called me to do, is be more of an advocate for that choice. That's a good choice, a noble choice, and a very positive one. Um, so I hope that you will join us in, in making ministries such as Salem Pregnancy Care Center um, a part of your part of your life, a part of your um, giving back, a way that you can just be involved in that ministry in different ways. I, I, I pray that you will make that a goal of your life. Thank you for the opportunity to share my story.